actually this university uh, was started only last year the campus is old Camp, this particular campus started in 2001 and actually one of the engineering colleges that we have started in 84 in Pimpri campus from there it shifted and so on the university was started in the state private university system that government of Maharashtra brought three four years back and uh, we got the approval to start this in March 2018 the approvals came in March 2018 I joined here after completion of my five-year tenure at IFAC uh, towards the end of April 2018 or you can say starting of May so last year we started few programs uh, we have bachelor's of design program, we have a media and journalism, we have biotechnology program, we have commerce management, computer application and few skills related courses. We did not start the engineering program. So my priority this year is to start engineering program. Now coming from the background that I have where I'm a futurist, but also I was involved at national level in planning the future uh, of the country in some sense and the role of technology there. So when I started to plan, when we were starting to plan for engineering discipline uh, in 2019-20 academic year, I went back to my thoughts of what we are preparing in technology vision 2035, where we were seeing what kind of trends technology is happening. We also looked at what is country's needs and accordingly I started to work on engineering plan. And due to that, I've come up with a very different kind of curriculum that is not being offered anywhere in the country. At the same time, it is very relevant to India's progress and to India's industry's progress. But I followed also a different process to define this whole curriculum. First, we had internal discussions. And we said that we'll just start right now with one discipline, that is computer science and engineering for which there is tremendous demand among the students. They, they are kind of mad to look at that word computer. But computer is a platform today which goes into everything. So just by saying computer is not enough. So I decided that the degree will be in computer science and engineering, but will define number of different specialization tracks. So initially I discussed internally we discussed because we have two engineering colleges in the campus we came up with eight different tracks and then i shared on social media on facebook on linkedin to get feedback from people across the world okay. i did not want to sit in a closed room with two to three experts and decide things i wanted to be transparent so that we have feedback from all over the country and outside the country surprisingly i found the linkedin there were more than 50000 views hundreds of comments lot of suggestions came in we incorporated all of those and we then defined finally 10 tracks of specialization i put it back again on linkedin other sources and still we keep receiving feedback but i also wanted industry participation so i'm getting a lot of feedback almost every day or other i'm meeting an industry person uh, either through directly or through video conferencing or by visiting like just two days back i was in bangalore to discuss the adobe corporation in their headquarters that how we can use their uh, you know, tools that they have. So just to give an example to, to the audience, what we have done in this case is that it's a BTEC Computer Science and Engineering. For the first two years, all the students will be studying the same program. And we plan to have take about 480 students in one batch. But after two years, they will start to take their track specific specialization courses that they have to do. So, for example, there's artificial intelligence and machine learning track, there's a data science track, there's a robotics and artificial intelligence track, there's intelligent transport system and logistics track with a five-year integrated program in transport and logistics management. So, here I'm providing both technology side as well as management side of this. Internet of Things, Cyber Security, and the FinTech course, which is basically financial technology, here again, they would be covering blockchain and other technologies which are upcoming. At the same time, this will have option of five-year integrated program in financial management. So both financial technology and management. So I wanted the students to be covering technology as well as management aspects so that they have a full idea of thing. This is a program on bioinformatics. Here also normally people club bioinformatics and biotechnology, but I realized and discussed with experts that it is more suitable to be part of computer science 
system rather than part of biotechnology program. So there are some bio courses to be covered, we will do that. There's a cloud and systems administration, including data center management, which is becoming very important. And the 10th one is web and mobile application, which will cover web 3.0, including 5G, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality. And this will also have a fiber integrated option of masters in design, covering a specialized in augmented reality, virtual reality, holography and game design. So many of these requires both the computer side of knowledge as well as the design side of knowledge. Both of them will be combined together. So these are the trend tracks that we have defined. In the first two years, also I'm revamping the complete curriculum. For example, when I was in Kharagpur, uh, that time engineering was a five-year program. The first year students used to do physics, chemistry, mathematics. The students used to come after 11th. Later on, it became a four-year program. The students would come after 12th after taking additional physics, chemistry, mathematics for one year. But roughly the first year has still remained same. Some changes have been there, but same physics, chemistry, mathematics continues to be done till now. Which means that the actual engineering program reduced from four year to three year. In 2001, when we, I was in Gandhinagar at Dhirubhai Mani Institute of Information and Communication Technology, we looked fresh at all of this. We made changes to be suitable to the current situation. And later on, many institutes have followed. So I had that background. So we have taken our curriculum from there and made further revisions. For example, we are introducing computational thinking in the first semester. We are introducing design thinking in the sem second semester. Along with design thinking, the students will have the opportunity to work in a fab lab, a fabrication lab, not a typical mechanical workshop, but this will have 3D printers, it will have laser cutters, it will have all the things that you can make a really professional quality prototype. And the students will start to work on projects right after first year because they would have had the design thinking, they would have had the exposure to, to think, uh, to Fab Lab. And my task is to get them to work on social and rural problems. And similarly, they all will do embedded system programming in the third semester. They will all do artificial intelligence, they will all do security. And from fifth semester, they will start to follow their own track specific thing. So I'm completely changing this system to suit the current needs and not only current needs, actually these students will come out in 2023 and 2024. They should actually be relevant to work needed at that point time. So that is the kind of change that I'm bringing. To support the system, I'm also starting an MTech in cyber physical systems and PhD programs. So we'll have what is the international system in US and, the, and also good places in India. They follow the teaching assistant system where there are large classes, many instructor teach and, uh, teaching assistants support that. So all the MTech students and the PhD students, by and large, will be getting financial assistance because they'll be either working as teaching assistant or as a research assistant. So they do not have to pay from their pocket. And in turn, the students get much better uh, academic learning. So my focus in research has been a very different kind of. I have focused on problems. I have. I have not looked at putting a label to myself that I'm a physics person, I'm a theory person, I'm an experiment person. I've looked at problems and tried to solve them. So my main focus in the curriculum that I just described very briefly is to start the students to look at a problem and start to break that into how they can solve into various ways. So for example, I'm introducing computational thinking in the first semester. This means that take a problem break into ways by which computer will understand that. So you have to break the problem in a way the computer understands that. Similarly, so design thinking is exactly doing that. It is actually telling you to look at systems and design all aspects of it together. Okay. And similarly, I'm backing that up with fabrication labs. So actually, students can, from idea to prototype, they can convert. And they start to work on projects from day one. So actually, it is what I'm trying to do is to what is called problem-based learning or project-based learning. Okay. This is what is being promoted around the globe. In India, we're still catching up on this. So this is very important for people to go into research where we need to focus on problem and learn how to solve. And my whole life I have devoted on this. Normally what is happening in India right now that if I know something, I try to work, find a problem that I can solve. Rather than so we solve, try to find problems that I can solve rather than the problem that needs to be solved. So we need to make up the students, bring them up so that they can take up real problems 
real challenges and solve them and that is very important for the country. So that is what I am trying to do and this will encourage the students to go into research and my experience earlier because I had 11 years of experience in university earlier, I found that many of my students would actually stay back after their graduation to gain research experience for one year, work in my labs where we are always working on real problems, whether it was problem of persons with severe disability, the problem like uh, moon mission or problem like nuclear fusion or agriculture or tracking of wildlife, each of the real problems where actually we are developing system which will help somebody or some discipline. So that is the kind of culture that I want to bring in into the campus. Yes, so uh, what we need to develop and what I plan to do is that we're trying to hire very good faculty members. Okay. And in fact, just before you came, there was a large number of applications that was sitting on my table. I was just going through that individually. What I need to create is not a person-centric system. Okay. Because I, as a vice chancellor, can only interact with a small number. But to set up a system which promotes research and innovation culture, to promote divergent thinking rather than convergent thinking. Students should be able to, to think in different ways. Let's say, for example, you take a design students. Okay. And I'm not all, only talking about engineering students because university has multiple disciplines. If I have to design something, let's say I want to design a cup. Cup does not have one single design. It has multiple designs, hundreds of thousands of designs. So this is called divergent thinking where students can, for a given problem, they can come out with different types of solutions. But typically in the Indian system, we teach them convergent thinking that one question has only one answer. So I need to break them and make them think in a divergent way and that is what I am introducing there. And so the faculty members also that I am trying to select are those who are aligned to this concept. And they have worked on real problems, they have done hands-on work not just read textbook and give lectures. So I'm trying to set up a system by which they would get exposure to the faculty members and we are trying to start a lot of research projects which will, where undergraduates will be involved. So my experience in the early university was also that I found that I could involve undergraduates in my research work. So most of the research work undergraduates were involved. They were quite smart but they didn't have too much time. So they had to work very hard in short times so I had to develop systems, I used to actually put senior and junior batches together and then I had to make curriculum dynamics so whatever I am learning through research projects will come back to the into the course. So slowly over one year, two years, three years time we started to see our growing and interestingly I found that every new field that I picked up where I had no knowledge, within one or two years we became known at international level. So our students have the talent to do it, they have to be guided properly. In the campus, I'm trying to create environment and not just me be the part of that, it, the whole system will support this. That is what I'm trying. So, today, uh, digital technology is having impact on, on our life, you know, whether we realize or we don't realize. For example, I worked on brain computer interface. I worked on disability sector to help people with disability and so on. And I frequently give talk on brain uh, computer interface and so on. This just uh, this Monday I was in Nalanda, the famous Nalanda. Uh, there was a Nalanda dialogue and I talked about how we may be able to achieve human immortality through computers and brains combining together in some way. Okay. So I talk about it. So for example, we don't realize part of our brain has moved into this. How? <laughs> because we don't remember telephone numbers now. It has gone into the computer memory. Right? Earlier, maybe we might better remember 10, 20 telephone numbers. We should dial by hand, so we will remember the numbers we dial. Now, we'll have thousands of those. We don't need to remember. We have some problem happens, of course. <laughs> we lose a lot of that. Thanks to Google that some of this can be backed up there. So, digital world has affected all of us, but what I have found in education system, we still not realize that. So, for example, a student who is in arts, they may be painting with brass and so on, but today they also need to learn how to do digital painting or something. Okay. So, whether it's architecture, whether it is applied arts, whether it is uh, design, whether it is uh, media and journalism or engineering students, all of them need to learn digital technology to, to be up and available to the 
uh, you know, our industry. Just to give another example, for example, I'm introducing virtual re reality and augmented reality and holography. Today, it's possible to design a prototype, for example, aircraft in six months' time as compared to six to seven years that is to take. Now, if you don't adopt this, then of course, we'll be always lagging behind. So that's why I'm trying to create professionals who could be doing this work. And today it's a tremendous opportunity for India that if we could do good work in augmented reality, virtual reality and so on, we convert a lot of contents, the textbooks, whether it's the training materials or even being able to maintain something from a distance into this system. And that makes our life simpler and things much faster. But so I'm trying to train students in doing that. So each of these requires digital platform and students have to family students are smart today but they have to be given proper knowledge of doing this so this is what i'm trying to do in this campus so actually uh, i missed out saying this in the third semester of engineering for example i would have a course on technology management and entrepreneurship okay. and since they would have worked on real problems and they would also know the technology management part, the entrepreneurship part, the patent uh, regime, the commercial aspects of this. I expect that number of students will start startups while they are in the college itself. So college will provide facilities for incubation of them and industry will participate in this process. I'm also trying to get industry to set up R&D labs in the campus that will make it easier for students to participate in their work at the same time do the startup. So I'm trying to create an ecosystem. Uh, I was dealing with this in the government of India level. I was part of, I was the nodal officer for all the IPI regime. And we were promoting various schemes to convert innovation into something that could be commercialized. And we used to give soft loans. So I'm very much aware of these things. I'm connected to this. So I'm sure that the students will get tremendous benefit out of this uh, in this campus. So one of the messages when I was being interviewed for Eureka program of Raj Sabha TV, the same question was asked and I would like to repeat the same answer. What I had said was that when we were young, there were not many opportunities for us. I was a little bit odd person who was not stuck to one particular job. Otherwise, most of the people will try to get you into a job and retire from that at the end of their you know, career. I have moved into different fields, I have taken that step, I have been part of government system, outside government system and so on. But that was not the case for most of us at that time. But today what is happening is that there are tremendous opportunities that are available. So what I tell young people is that follow your passion. For example, somebody who was good in cricket earlier, say I mean Sunil Gavaskar's time, for them to survive on cricket money was not sufficient, they had to do some other work to survive. Today, due to things like IPL and so on, we have hundreds of cricket players who are earning enough money through professional cricket that they don't have to worry about anything else. So they may not have passed class 10th or 12th, but they're still earning much more than anybody else. So what I'm telling students, young people, follow your passion, but whatever you do, be the best. You can't be mediocre. If you want to play cricket, be the best in that. If you want to be a musician, be the best in that. Don't try to be mediocre in something you don't like. Do what you like. Do what is your passion. But excel in that and opportunities are open for you. This is what I want to pass on. So today what has happened is that uh, the information has got digitized, which means that it's also got democratized. There's the principle of 6D. Whatever gets digitized, it also gets democratized at the end. So there's 6D. It starts from digitization, ends with democratization. So channels like YouTube and others are the process of that. So earlier, we had print media, then electronic media came. They were controlled by few people. They have to decide what goes into the media, what comes to the mainstream. And most of the people, had no information something else could be happening. But today, thanks to this social media, YouTube and so on, information is no longer somebody's personal property. Okay. And it's become democratized. So that means that I'm able to pass on information to others by 
very different means that was possible earlier. In fact, I had a very interesting experience. I'll not give the details of that. But there was an incident related to education system where a lot of uproar was there about sometime in June and July last year. I was somehow associated with uh, that system earlier. And I felt that I must write information about this to put the facts. When I shared that information with a media house, they did not want to publish that. They said that it is against their management's principle. So that means media house is not willing to publish the fact because it goes against their own idea what they want to push into it. Then I shared it by blog through social media and so on. It got widely circulated. So I could reach out to people bypassing things. So uh, all of this is a very good work. We need to use this medium as much as possible. And this is the part of democratization of information. Okay. So thank you very much for taking up this challenge.